Hello, and welcome to my tutorial series on how to make a 2D platform in Unity. In this video, we'll be adding a little bit of a hurt reaction to our player that causes him to bounce back when he hits an enemy. Let's begin. So right now when we go over to our enemy, our ninja frog, or whatever character you chose, he doesn't hurt us at all. So let's fix that. Let's get out of our game here and let's go to our C sharp script, our player controller script. So in our player controller C sharp script, we're going to go down to the function that we created that allowed us to destroy the enemy when we landed on top of it. And we're going to modify a little bit of what we did last week. We're going to go ahead and first I'm just going to create a little room here in the function because we're going to be adding some code. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to actually add a little more. We're going to create another if statement here and we're going to say if this part right here, we're just going to cut it out, right click, cut, paste this right here. If state equals falling and then we're going to get rid of these two ands because we don't need them anymore. So if this state equals state dot falling, we're going to say we're going to say to destroy our game object. So it's pretty much the same, only we included another if statement for this second section right here. Then we're going to put in the parameters for being able to hurt our, or excuse me, hurt our player if he comes from the right or left. So we're going to say else. And we're going to give ourselves a little room here for this. Else. And another if statement, if other dot game object dot transform and I'll explain all this in a second dot position I spell position right probably not position dot X is greater than transform dot position dot X and because we have a NIF statement, we need our curly brackets. And then this statement right here, we're going to put a little comment. Enemy is to right. And then I'm going to create another else statement, some curly brackets, and I'm just going to comment. Enemy is to left. So I just put these comments here because we're going to put other code in here. And I just left this to make a little note for myself. So right here is probably what you're going to ask about this, this second if statement. Because I'm saying, all right, we're falling on its head and then we're killing it. And then we need another condition for getting hurt. So if other.gameObject.transform.position.x is greater than transform.position.x. So if we go in our game here, let's just look at our scene. If I click on my ninja frog, you see his X position is 14.67. And my player over here, his X position is negative 5.75. So whenever the, and I'll actually, let's click on the player. Let's move him just for a second. So if the player is to the, over here, and the frog is to his right, the frog has a higher x position than the player now if i take my player and i move him over to the left and the frog is on his left the player now has a higher x position than the frog put my player back here so going back to our code what i'm saying is that if other dot game object and remember other dot game object was our frog or our enemy is greater, I'm sorry, other.gameObject.transform.position, which is just basically saying where he is, if his X position is greater than ours, the enemy is to our right. If it isn't, if else, it means the enemy is to our left. So next, let's first spell the word transform right. 
And then let's clean up our code up here a little bit. We have our entire movement code up here. Let's take all of this and put it into a function or method, whichever term you prefer, like we did for velocity state right here. So let's go down here and underneath our velocity state, we'll just create a private void. We'll call it movement. We'll give it a parentheses, go to the end, create some space. And then we're going to go up here to all this code that we use for our movement. Right here. We're going to cut this out. Go down to this function right here, paste it in. And then we're going to go up here to update and we're going to put movement parentheses and semicolon. Let's just double check that that all worked out right. It should. Let our editor can just compile for a second, go to game, hit play. Can move right, can move left. I can jump. I can land on our frog. Looking good. Let's go back to the script and finish this up. So now what we're going to do is, is we're going to add the action of our player getting knocked back when the frog hits him or when he hits the frog. So to start that off, we're just going to create another float. We're just going to copy, paste, and then we're going to change this instead of jump force. We'll make it, uh, we'll just make it hurt force. We'll keep the, the general word usage we've been using. So we're creating a float. It's going to be called hurt force. It's, it's just, Excuse me, it's generally just going to be the the amount of uh, distance that we're going to be pushed back when we hit the frog. And then we're going to take this variable and we're going to use it down here inside the if statements that we developed down here where it says enemy is to the right. We're going to put rb dot velocity is going to equal new vector two. And in here, we're going to put hurt force, comma, rb dot velocity dot y, and a semicolon. Actually, up here, it's not going to be hurt force. It's going to be negative hurt force, because if the enemy is to our right, we want to get pushed to the left, and that's the negative direction. Then we're just going to take this copy it and control V to paste it. And then instead of a negative here, it's going to be a positive number. So basically what this line of code says is that, you know, rigid body, which remember we declared this up here. This, this was a few videos ago, maybe more than a few videos ago, where we said we're, our rigid body was designated by the name RB. So down here, we're saying the velocity of our rigid body, which is our player, is going to be equal to a new vector 2. And the directions of this new vector 2 are going to be the hurt force going to the left in the negative direction, which is 10f, and the rb.velocity.y, which is just our velocity in the y direction. Then for, excuse me, if we hit them from the other side, it's the same thing, only the force is in the positive direction or it's going to be moving us to the right. So the next thing we're going to do, actually the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a space between new and vector. I typed that wrong. So new and vector should be two separate words. And we're going to hit save. I'm going to go back into Unity and I'm going to show you something real quick in that this isn't going to work. So the reason why it's not working, the reason why actually it kind of does it there a little bit, but the reason why our player isn't being knocked back from being hurt is because the movement function is sort of overriding 
our code for being hurt down here. So we have to do something to change this up. So we are going to go up here and we're going to add a new state and we're going to call it hurt. And we're going to go down and we're going to make an if statement and we're going to say if state dot, I'm sorry, if state exclamation point equals, and I'll explain what that is in one second. State dot hurt and brackets and inside these brackets, we're going to stick our movement function. And so what this does, actually, there should not be a, a dot there. I'm sorry. So it should be state exclam excuse me, exclamation point equal sign state dot hurt. And what the exclamation point and the equal sign mean in code is not. So this means that if the state is not state dot hurt, which we just inserted up here. So if this state does not equal state dot hurt, then the movement is normal. And what we're going to do down here is we're going to declare that the state is going to equal state dot hurt. So we're saying down here when we get to this point that we're changing the state to hurt. And when it is changed, then we can have the, or excuse me, the code that makes our player bounce off of the frog because he's hurt will go into motion. So let's hit save here. Let's go back into Unity and let's hit play. Our character runs forward and he bounces off the frog. Not every time though. And, and the reason why sometimes this will be a little buggy and this has been an ongoing problem and I know many of you have asked about it in the comments is because our our animation here is, you know, it's basically a free animation pack. It has a lot of stuff in it. It's not terrible, but it does have its limitations. And one of the limitations we have with this is that if we go over to here where it says art, pixel adventures, assets, main characters, we go to virtual guy and let's, if you, if we look at his running animation, just look down here. If you see the very first picture here, He's standing in what looks like an idle position. And then he goes to a run and, and he kind of takes a first step. Steps get gets a little further. Then his legs come back together and then he kind of repeats the process. And I didn't notice this when we first did it, but this is what is causing your animation to sort of lag because he's sort of doing his he's sort of cycling through his animation twice. So I'm not going to deal with this right now. I'm going to set aside more towards the end of this series of video to polish these sort of things. But this is why when you hit play that you sort of get this lag here. And the way to do it is just to, to clip this down into just one small sequence of movement. That's why when you hit the button and let go, he sort of just has this delay of movement that is actually getting in the way of everything. You know, when I know that when you've tried to jump, it's sort of sometimes a little difficult when he's running because he's still cycling through his animation. And sometimes when we're hitting this, he might just get stuck to it. But like I said, we'll, we'll start, we'll address those things eventually. I just want to make sure that at least for now, I'm going through the different subjects because this is more a series about basics. So we're going to stop right here and in the next video we'll, excuse me, we'll add uh, an animation to our character being hurt. So as always, thank you for watching, like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Facebook and Twitter, and support me on Patreon. And a very big thanks to all of you who are supporting me on Patreon. Your contribution means a lot. See you next time.